piece that's intended to be printed, almost all of your photographs will require a little bit of work in Photoshop to assure that they print nicely. And today in this video, I'm going to look at three different special problems and approaches to solving them. And the first is a color cast. And uh, light, no matter whether it's daylight or um, uh, fluorescent light or incandescent light, all has a color. And uh, there is sometimes a mismatch or you see that color come through in, in the picture. And so in this particular case, we have a very yellowish cast on her skin. Uh, and if you look at an area that's supposed to be whitish, like the teeth, you can see that the teeth are also a little bit yellow. Now, with modern digital cameras, this is a little bit less likely than it was with film cameras, but it still happens sometimes, and sometimes if you're working with historical materials, as this picture happens to be, uh, it, it can manifest in a picture. So I'm going to go into, well, there's a number of ways to uh, correct an image. But I'm going to go into adjustment and levels because I think that that is probably easiest to understand as your beginning. I will often also use curves as well, but let's go into levels. And this is a little bit unintuitive the first time you see it, but essentially what you're looking at is a bar graph right up here. And this bar graph is plotting all the information between the highlights and the lowlights in this image. And so one could take the shadow area and say, I want it to be, I want more of it in to be in the darker area. I'm sort of pushing my darkest, uh, I'm pushing more of the data into the darkest parts of the image. I don't want to do that, but I could. And the same is true with the light area. I could uh, move that in and start to blow out the highlights of this image. Uh, what The one I do use most often, I use those sometimes, is the middle one, because sometimes that's nice for brightening up an image. Uh, when an image hits uh, the, the plates, when you print it, uh, uh, if a dot is too small and uh, images are screened into like little printer dots because ink is either on or off. Uh, you know, screen pixel, pixel on your screen can glow brighter or less bright, but a printed dot is always either ink or not ink. And if those dots are too small, you may get blown out. So you, it may, it may just not print. And if they're too dark, uh, they melt, may fill in between dots. So, uh, if you're, Really what you want for correcting for print is most of your data to be in the sweet spot in this middle part of the graph. And so brightening that up probably helps this image. Uh, the other way to approach this is with the eyedropper tools. And these also basically do what I did with the end. So if I say I want everything here to be, uh, the, you know, just paper colored, the brightest part of it, then that blows out that area and it redistributed data a little bit around here. Or if I decided I wanted everything to be in the shadows, and that is basically the shadow, but I could pick a lighter area, and that's gonna turn that all into shadow. Now the other thing those are gonna do, those two at the end, and you can see her teeth with that last one did become a little bit brighter, uh, is they don't just take that and make it the darkest area or the lightest area, they also make it eliminate whatever cast happens to be in that area. And uh, sometimes an image can have multiple casts. It can have a cast in the shadow and a cast in the bright area. Um, uh, and that just turns it to basically a, a pure black or a pure white rather than a black with a bluish cast or whatever cast that image might happen to have. I'm going to hit undo couple of times so I can only do it once so let me cancel out of that and I'm going to go back to levels this time I'm going to use the key command which on a which is going to be command L for levels or control L I think on a PC and bring that back so we just undid that so the middle one of these eyedroppers is uh, you would think would just uh, if it worked like the other two would set your wherever you're clicking to uh, it as a as a 50% gray perhaps but instead what it does is it takes whatever color you are at and it uh, just basically neutralizes that color so we could take her teeth as a target and click 
and we can neutralize that as something that's a more neutral gray. And we can see her skin uh, probably gets a little bit closer to what it would have been at the time, or maybe still is, who knows, that's a fairly old photograph. And maybe I would lighten that a little bit. Uh, you can also use these sliders down here to make your blacks a little bit less black. Now, if you go too far, it starts to wash out your photo. Your photo starts to become flat, uh, but you can do that. And let's just say, okay. And I'll hit Command L again. And here is that. And we can see that we do have still a little bit of image uh, stuff at the end, but most of our data is, is in the nice middle there. Uh, now, another problem, and I talked about flat images. This would be a fairly flat image on the shadow end. There's just a lot more information here in the shadows than there are in the highlights. Uh, and to, this would just turn into mud on most presses. So I can go back to levels, and we could see there's that accumulation of data all over on the shadow side. So what I want to do is I want to bring more of that information, bring my the white, the light end of this image uh, closer to where the data starts around here. So I can do that by just moving this in. And if I get too close, if I go too far, and we look in this fur area, we start to lose uh, data. And I should say that working this way is not a non-destructive process. Uh, this will change your image, the, the quality of your image with time. And so when I do this, I always try to save a copy that I've corrected so that if I have to do it again, if I have to recorrect an image, and that happens very rarely these days, but it used to happen more often when I was uh, less experienced, um, if I have to go back, I can go back to the original image and I can uh, start with all the data. And so I can maybe just lighten this up a little bit. We're seeing just a hair of this cat's uh, sides. We can go a little bit further. And that's probably as far as I want to go. It gets too bright, it sort of washes out again. And so I want to talk a little bit more about what I mean by I'm going to accept this result. Uh, about missing data. So I'm going to hit Command L again. And we saw a little bit of this on the other image, but if you look at all these, uh, what, what I sometimes refer to as combing, all these little gaps, those are literal gaps in the data. We've succeeded in moving a lot more of our data into the middle area, sort of the sweet spot for printing for this image, but we've also created gaps. Now, uh, in an average photo, there are 256 of these units in between white and black. Uh, so if we correct our image once, it's probably not enough to really damage it. But we could do this again just for the sake of argument. And oh, I think we, let's undo that. And we were very destructive very quickly in this case, but that's just data that is gone. I cannot get anything useful out of this image anymore. I cannot restore it. That is information that is just deleted from this image. So it's important to uh, uh, try not to overdo it when you're correcting an a, a image uh, and to keep it uh, one time. Now, here's a picture that is an opposite problem than the low-key one. Um, and that is uh, this woman with her dog walking on a beach, and the sky is very bright. And that is typically the case. A lot of times I work with images and the sky is just, uh, you know, white. It's just paper color. There's nothing in it. And so I find myself uh, sort of painting in a little bit of a suggestion of a sky. In this case, there's a lot of data in that sky, a lot of visual interest, but it's just so washed out because it was so bright that we're really not seeing it again. So I'm going to hit Command L to get to my levels. And here we can see absolutely the opposite problem. All of my data is here in the uh, lighter end of the image. So what I can do is sort of bring in that end and I could get a little bit more out of that sky. Uh, but the trouble is that 
there was some nice colors on her clothing and there was a little bit of detailing on the dog and I lose it this way. Um, I just uh, I, I just lose all that detail. I get a lot more sort of juice or visual interest out of this guy. I'd probably actually not go much further than that. Um, but I lose a lot of her information. So there is a way to do this that is, I accidentally, yeah, let's undo levels. There's a way to do this that actually is non-destructive and that's with what's called a adjustment level. And under my layers, an adjustment layer, ooh, I'm a little, it's kicking out of my screen, but I'm just gonna go down and there are a bunch of things I could add to this, but I'm just going to pick the same thing we've been working in, which is levels. And that brings in that same like little graphic that we saw before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that edge in to get a little bit more out of that sky. And we could see, you know, detail we couldn't even see really before. There's some uh, uh, wind farm off the coast and we can just see a little bit of that coming in now but we're losing a lot of of her and the dog now so let's zoom in on that so what i can do is when you create an adjustment level you also create an automatic mask for that adjustment and that mask is by default uh blank We've applied it to the whole image, but if we go to the mask, not the image itself, but you can see I have my levels mask selected, then I can start to mask out the, the adjustment and its effect on her and the dog. So I'm just going to select my brush tool, and that's your B key, or you could just select it with your tools. and. Uh, as with all things uh, Photoshop, uh, black is going to take it away, take away the effect or, or mask something out. And uh, this is just, uh, you know, an empty layer right now. But I can start to paint some of that detail back into her. And so that's sort of a way with an image like this to have your cake and eat it too. And if you make a mistake, you can just hit your X key or to flip your colors or just flip your colors. And then I could just, whoop, I did it twice. And just paint what I don't want, adjust it back in. And if you use a softer brush, a, uh, I have to hit X again. And there's some of the dog. Uh, you can get a smooth transition. You don't even have to be super precise when you are doing this technique.